at the Future Female Forward, as we celebrate and recognize women achievers, we also laud their journey filled with failures, challenges, and roadblocks, despite which they continued their course to success and emerged as leaders. In our next conversation, we have many such women entrepreneurs who've beaten all odds and fought hardships to emerge victorious and established business models that are innovative, sustainable, and beneficial for the country's growth and prosperity. Telangana is a land of opportunity and this youngest Indian state is home to 6,660 plus registered startups, 356 seed funded startups, 148 venture funded startups, over 3,400 incubators and 150 plus purchase order rewarded. The state offers the conducive infrastructure, human capital and sustainable funding model. So let's hear the Telangana homegrown stories of success from these super women. Please join me in welcoming on stage Mansi Gandhi, co-founder Dr. C. Mansi. Priyanka Ravala, head international programs, strategy and partnerships, the hub. Kalpana Ramesh, founder the Rainwater Project. Likita Bhanu, CEO Terra Firma Projects. Deepti Alapati, founder Pulp Cosmetics and Shilpa Reddy, CEO Saptagi Camphor Private Limited. It's a proud moment to moderate this session with power-packed panel of women at the Future Female Forward Initiative. Uh, so, Deepti, let me quickly, you know, start with you. Your brand was launched just a week before, you know, the world witnessed, India witnessed uh, lockdown, uh, you know, uh, logistic support was restricted, there was restrictions on shipment, and I believe you what logged about two to three lakhs of face masks order alone in just the first month. How did that happen? Talk to us about your business model. Before I answer that, I just want to tell everyone here that this is so special for me because I joined T-Hub as a second employee when wow. we were at St phase one. So I know Jayesh sir, like I've seen him on and off uh, quite a bit. So this is very special to be here. Um, so to answer that, yes, we launched one week right before the lockdown was announced. Hmm. Um, and everybody knows that launching a brand during a pandemic is just swimming across the tide. So we knew that we had to make some changes in the marketing strategy. And uh, two things that really worked for us was uh, we started building our brand advocates organically. So if anyone who knows a brand knows that it's very uh, quirky, very bright, we use very bright colors. So anybody who ordered a face mask got a really cool box. And whether that person had 100 followers or 100,000 followers, everybody put it up on uh, Instagram so, because it was really Instagrammable. Plus, I think they love the customer experience. So mm. that worked really well for us because from one person to another, we were just building brand advocates. And the second thing that really worked for us was I think the pandemic really opened um, doors for a lot of startups yes. like Pulp because um, I think they were looking for brands that were very transparent um, and ticked all boxes. So I think that's really that really worked for us. All right, okay. Shilpa, let me now come to you. You know, you've carved your own success story in a male-dominated industry. Saptagir Camphor is a platform that provides innovative solutions for specialty chemicals and pharmaceuticals. Uh, you know, it is a leader in India and abroad. So tell us about your journey, your business, or should I call your successful model? So uh, I, I come from a finance background. First of all, I think that context has to be set. I have an MBA in finance worked in Fortune 500 uh, companies in mm. the U.S. Um, and 10 plus years back came, uh, came back to join the family business, which uh, is primarily manufacturing. Uh, so we manufacture specialty chemicals, uh, camphor and fragrance ingredients, as well as pharma and APIs um, and intermediates. So um, it certainly was a change from a Fortune 500 to a mid-sized Mm. family business where, uh, you know, shop floor acceptance took a while and, and I anticipated that. So I think the, the model to success, uh, and I tell younger women this, people, you know, ladies were starting out, women were starting out, stick around, you know, be there. People get used to you 
and eventually you know you get what you want so i think to get intimidated or kind of face that resistance and almost all of us have i think in industries which are primarily male dominated and i'll say that most industries are male dominated yes. i think other than a few sectors like education and so on uh you being there you providing solutions they knowing that you are there for them makes a big difference in leadership roles priyanka coming to you now you know uh, it has been a busy month uh, 40 hub the signing of mou with assam's numaliga refinery collaboration with collins aerospace and finally winning the national technology award for best technology business incubator so tell us more yes <laughs> So tell us more about T Hub how it is fostering innovation and empowering tech startups and its overall framework Super so firstly welcome to T Hub T Hub is the world's largest innovation hub as on date uh, so we are spread across 5 lakh 80000 square feet of land and at this point of time we have 320 startups incubated in this space and we have graduated around 3000 startups in last 8 years this is our 8th year in the ecosystem um and we've been instrumental uh, in defining our own framework like a startup we evolved over the last 7 years right so we designed and gave to a framework which is called 6m 2p framework that we uh, offer to any entrepreneur innovator that's looking to uh, you know expand grow uh, the 6ms would be one access to money which is funding right uh, so we have a uh, team dedicated team who works with startups preps them uh, they also manage investor desk where they talk to angel investors vcs to provide various funding uh, venues for our startups then the second m uh, that we provide which is most crucial for many startups is market access so we work with 600 odd corporates uh, and we have 90 plus innovation partners across uh, the globe and we provide market access opportunities for the startups uh, in other geographies in india other state governments as well then uh, the third m that we focus most is on mentorship uh, where we have 150 plus mentors these are uh, high end individuals i would call them uh, they are the experts that come from 20 30 years of experience from a particular sector with a specialization that mm. offer expertise to these startups to upgrade themselves to provide quick tips on how to grow their journey okay. and the fourth and that we focus is manpower and the fifth is uh, motivation and the sixth one is methodologies all these six m's are driven by two p's which is partnerships and policy advisory this is a simple framework that we use to accelerate entrepreneur success all right so thank you for taking us how you know t hub is empowering startups here in hyderabad uh, moving to you know uh, kalpana you are one of the very few women in hyderabad or in india that's taken up rain water harvesting uh, tell me what kind of measures are you taking at your own company to empower more women to join the bad wagon or perhaps take similar uh, issues uh, first of all thank you for the opportunity to speak here um as a woman yes uh, it, rainwater harvesting actually is not just rainwater harvesting today um, you know uh, the way we have driven the company and the strategy that we have followed itself is an inspiration for millions of women to follow because we uh, are connected to availability of water right from the households to culture to religion to sanitation we are connected in a, you know a series of things so women are so connected to uh, you know water and its conservation only the awareness part is missing and what is the way forward because it's a huge behavior change uh, issue so while we um, run our startup we have to also uh, tackle behavior change and uh, bring that change in the society so today we have right from funders who are uh, women who have supported in a big way um, artists and artisans uh, who are part of culture and that and uh, our own uh, you know fraternity of architects and urban planners 
Uh, we work today with very, very young women who are conservation architects across the country. It's an inspiration for them to come and work with us. Absolutely. Because it's just not rainwater harvesting. We're doing um, rainwater harvesting. It's hidden in, in, in the entire ecosystem, like, uh, you know, well restorations, heritage uh, well restorations. We're talking about lakes. We're talking about a block where we make that block water rich. So we teach people that rainwater harvesting is this not... Uh, you know, uh, just like what we hear. So, Likita, quickly let me come to you now. At the young age of 22, you decided to enter the organic food business. What was that big idea that excited you towards this vertical? And talk to us about the support mechanism that you got. Um, I think uh, I wasn't thinking, <laughs> mostly, but I just... Uh, that worked well. <laughs> that worked very well for me. Um, but that is also a skill that I have kind of developed with time, is to not think too much of the outcome, mm -hmm. and to actually go in and dwell and uh, look at the problem and solve it, which is most part of what business is about. Mm -hmm. And um, I was 22, but mostly the passion came from my mother, who was a farmer, and we both started the company together. And today it's a very surreal experience for me because at 24, I was featured on Young Turks with yeah. Shireen. And 10 years later, I'm here. <laughs> so um, I feel that um, um, I also can see my journey as who I was then yes. and to who I am now. Uh, Mansi, let me now come to you. You know, uh, Dr. C is a new age diagnostics player. I, is a tech first healthcare provider you know you're delivering customer centric healthcare online and at home so if you could take us through some of your offerings and the business model that you've devised sure so we started in um, 2014 in the diagnostic space yeah. but today we're building what we call the internet hospital our mission is to make healthcare accessible and affordable for the majority of india so low cost and easily available healthcare uh, we're working on helping people screen at large numbers at home and then working towards helping them find treatment as well. So we service about 45,000 patients every month and help them through most of the conditions that they find through that. And what kind of partnerships have you, you know, brought in so far? Um, we largely work with the ecosystem that exists in the geographies that we are. We work with healthcare providers that are in the top five or ten rated in that city. Okay. And we partner with them, leverage their, tech, their advantage, their brand name and their expertise in the healthcare space and bring that to consumers. All right. Uh, Shilpa, you know, coming back to you in a career span of 20 years, and like you mentioned earlier, you've had extensive experience working with Fortune 500 companies in the U.S. Uh, tell me, what's the scenario of female uh, representation and leadership roles globally? Um, so I don't think we can be very homogenous in terms of what international leadership for women constitutes. I can talk about my own experience. Uh, and uh, the company that I worked for certainly had a very strong uh, female leadership nurturing program. And it started all the way from an analyst level as you entered into the finance roles to going up to middle management and then senior management. So that uh, ladder was very well built in terms of uh, how much uh, focus the institution put on it. You see that entire rung uh, up the hierarchy and then you understand that it's not that one woman CEO who sets an example. It's the woman who's ahead of you who sets an example on what you should do. So I think that to me was very, very uh, meaningful. It set the path in how I deal with younger women who are entering the workforce now. And it's very important. So we want to say this is how I manage my life. Okay, I'm not a superwoman. I failed enough and this is how I do it.